if everything in the world followed grammar, right, then it would be, yeah, it would be a little weird to say, I'm loving it, because normally if that's true about you and that's your condition, you would just say, I love it, right? I love it. But I'm loving it, maybe even I'm hating it, but generally I'm loving it kind of came out as a expression, as a, an idiom, sort of a colloquialism. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm not exactly sure where it came from. People will just say, yeah, I'm loving it when they like something. A stative verb is simply a verb about a condition, not about an ongoing action. Right? We have lots of different verbs. For example, the verb jump, that's about an action that somebody does. They go up in the air and they go down. What did they do? They jumped. Is he jumping? He's jumping. Wow, he jumped. He's a jumper. <laughs> no, I don't say that. No, that has another meaning. So what about things like it feels nice or it tastes weird or I have one or I know is saying is saying stuff like that the same as jumping? It's not. It's not. Think of it as more like a condition, right? If you know something, if you know something, if so, if you taste something, now that taste is a is a weird one. So there's a bit of we'll talk about taste because that's an interesting one. But if something tastes weird, is that is it the same as jumping, right? Yeah, there's something different about that, right? There's something different about that kind of verb. Well, what is going on there? I think the best thing to do here is explore this with some examples, state of verbs. These again, to understand them, they focus on senses, how we think, the way that we feel, a condition, maybe having something or lacking something. Again, if you have a hundred dollars, there's something very different about you having that hundred dollars than you jumping because you may have that hundred dollars all day long until you don't have it anymore, but you don't jump. You're not in the air all day long. When you jumped, you just quickly went up and then came down. An action verb, right? Okay, that's the idea, but I think we need to look at some examples of what it is and what it is not so that you can really get it, and then I'm going to give you a challenge, okay? So we'll talk about how to use state of verbs, we'll look at the examples, then I'm going to ask you to come up with some of your own. All right, so let's say seem. Okay, seem. If I say, you seem tired, you seem a bit tired, that is how you are now. That is your condition, right? Now, could I say, you are seeming a bit tired? Suddenly, it sounds odd. What is going on there? Why does it sound odd? It sounds odd because it's not really an action you're doing. It's about your current condition, right? And the way that you kind of are right now, at least to me, I think you seem tired. So you're not doing that in the same way that you're jumping, right? Or you're drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking a cup of coffee. That is your ongoing action. So for state of verbs, we don't usually use them in the ing form in the for example continuous present form the continuous present would be i am walking we are running we are watching tv we were eating that would be the past present progressive or the past continuous progressive right so past past progressive or past continuous not past continuous progressive they're the same thing okay anyway so that's the idea and that's a good test you can do if you want to know if something is a state of verb or not you can ask yourself, does it work if I add an ing to it? You are seeming tired. Well, no. You're walking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's an ongoing action. Seeming isn't really one of those. Okay. How about no? We talked about no. Do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, how about now? Do you know what time it is? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? No, I don't. Okay, so you can know or not know, but that's your condition. You knowing or not knowing is your, 
your state, your condition. So saying, are you knowing it? It's odd. It sounds awkward, right? Taste. This tastes like cotton candy. That's how it tastes to me when I do that. This is tasting like cotton candy. I'm talking about the condition of me in relation to the cotton candy and how it it's kind of like seems, right? This seems like cotton candy. This tastes like cotton candy. It's not cotton candy, but I'm comparing it to that. Now, this is an interesting one, specifically with tastes, taste, and there are some other interesting ones as well, where they could be both, depending on how it's used. If we say we're tasting wine, right? Or I tasted it and I didn't like it, then it suddenly becomes an action verb. So taste could be used in either way. Sometimes taste is used as a stative verb, and sometimes taste is used as a simple regular action verb. Like this. I tasted the coffee. It was too bitter. So that's my action of going, mm, eh, ooh, bitter, right? That's the action I'm doing. But if I describe it, it tastes like cotton candy. No longer is it about me doing that thing. It's about the way that it is. Now, it's kind of condition or, or it's condition in my mind, at least, right? It's not about the cotton candy. It's about my sense of the cotton candy. So when we're talking about senses, using taste like that, and it's a state of verb, then we would not say this is tasting like cotton candy, probably. But if it's the action, we go to a wine tasting to taste wine, then it's suddenly an action. Okay, how about need? Elaine needs time to consider. So she needs some time to think. That's what she needs, okay? Was she doing that? No, it's just her current condition. She is needing time to consider? No, no, no. Does that mean you can never, ever, ever, ever use the word needing? No, it doesn't mean that, right? It's just that need by itself is usually, if it's a state of verb, not used as an ing. Not that need can never be written as an ing or used as an ing because you might use for example needing as a gerund which is ing used similar to a noun for example needing privacy is normal needing privacy is normal okay well that's using needing as an ing but it's actually needing privacy the thing we're talking about it's actually a gerund so don't make don't get confused and say to yourself, oh, that means I can never use needing with an ing. No, that's not what I said. I said that needing would not be correct in this case because in this case, when we're talking about her condition, Elaine's condition, we're going to use it simply with or as its simple form that agrees with the subject, in this case, needs because it's about her condition, okay? They have a lot on their plate. That's their condition. I think we're probably getting used to that feeling now. Okay, this is about what's going on with them. It's about their condition, their state. We're starting to get a sense for that. They are having a lot on their plate suddenly sounds, sounds weird, right? Something wrong with that. I hate this new screen. I'm hating this new screen. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well then I hate, got it. I'm hating my current condition. It's not really an action that's a little weird. Okay, I get that. So that would be the same for love, right? So I'm loving it would be wrong, right? Normally I would say yes, but then we get into the territory of what we could call a colloquialism where some patterns are things people say arrive in the language and it's not clear why, but hey, people just say it, right? So you might be thinking, wait, isn't isn't the slogan of McDonald's, ba -ba -ba -ba, I'm loving it. Yes, it is. If everything in the world followed grammar, right, then it would be, yeah, it would be a little weird to say, I'm loving it, because normally if that's true about you and that's your condition, you would just say, I love it, right? I love it. But I'm loving it, maybe even I'm hating it, but generally I'm loving it kind of came out as a expression, as a, an idiom, sort of a colloquialism. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm not exactly sure where it came from. People will just say, yeah, I'm loving it when they like something. Okay, and then McDonald's said, we think that's better. They probably chose it because to just say, I love it isn't very memorable, but there's something kind of memorable 
saying I'm loving it. It sounds friendly and colloquial and very spoken, right? And the little ba da ba bum bum, that little song that they play, it works. It's very memorable. Well, they can do that if they want to, right? Think different. That's a famous slogan that Apple used in the past. It doesn't make grammatical sense, but it doesn't have to necessarily because it's trying to make you remember and think different instead of following the rules of grammar. Okay, I'm trying to just give you a sense for how these work. So now that we've gone through these examples, we've talked about what a state of verb is. Generally, we're talking about a condition or a taste or a feeling of something, something that's true about this person or true about this situation talked about what it means we've looked at examples and that we don't usually use state of verbs in the for example present continuous tense because we're not really doing them we are we are them <laughs> that is our condition right so what I'd like you to do is make two examples modeling each of the correct state of verb sentences so take each of the sentences that I went over and then make two of your own examples based on that with those specific verbs. I think if you do that, at least you will have a very intuitive sense, a very natural sense for how to use them naturally, okay? So good luck with that. Let me know if you have any questions. You can put them in the Discord or you can put them in the comments. That works, whatever you prefer. I would love to take a look at them. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also, if you want to learn more about this stuff, if you want to improve your grammar and your writing, check out my courses in the links in the description.